What is going on fellow reefers? Today we are going to a new job. I've never been there before and um, Tommy, what am I in for? What's going on? It's a big tank. How, what's big? What, how's, how big is big? Uh, well, it's roughly 20 foot by five and a half foot by four foot tall. Bull nose on the sides. It's got artificial inserts in the middle. You view okay. it on almost all panels. Beautiful tank, but the people that installed it, they never mapped out the plumbing. Uh, there's some stuff that we got to work on in the filtration. So today we're going to get a feel for everything that needs to be done there. Awesome. I'm excited. This is my first time going. So uh, let's hit the road. I'll see you guys there. So we're here at the customer's tank. I'm really excited to go inside and see what we're looking at. So without further delay, let's go. All right, so right when you walk in the first door, this is what you see. This is a, like the hallway entrance to the house. And uh, this is one of the panels where you can see the aquarium. It's pretty dope. We got the cabinets open there, the lights are going. But uh, check this out. Check over here on the side. Now this is the playroom where the kids, this is a kid's playroom. Um, how cool is this? This thing is really just absolutely massive. Um, Tommy's working on the lights right now, but just by looking at it, there's not much going on in here, not many fish, and you can see the fake coral uh, right here. Now this is our first time here, or my first time here, so I'm just trying to get a lay of the land and checking it out. Here's the other side panel of the aquarium. You view this from the living room. So right now I'm just trying to get a feel for everything that they got going on here. I'm observing, this is our first actual service to this tank. This is really, really thick acrylic, and it's gonna be hard to find a magnet that's gonna be able to um, work on this tank, especially because it is acrylic. We don't wanna scratch it, so this is gonna be some effort trying to clean this glass. The good thing is, is the algae isn't on incredibly strong, so that's a positive. As you can see, Tommy right here, he's hitting it on the glass, and it's coming off pretty good. So we just gotta make sure it doesn't build up and stay up on it. So here is a view from the top. And see, it's got the lids, which is preventing that water evaporation. Now, here are the lights. These are pretty badass. Uh, they're on a timer. But because this tank doesn't have any live coral or anything that needs like that, nothing's photosynthetic in here, uh, it's not that serious. So we just kind of keep the lights on as we see fit. Now, one of the things that jumps off to me is that there's not a lot of fish in this tank. And uh, from what I'm understanding, there was some type of mass die off. So that's something we'll have to look into. But there's a porcupine puffer in here, which how could you not love these fish? <laughs> look at that face. They are adorable. And then one of the more badass fish, the uh, clown trigger. I mean, the pattern on those things is just ridiculous. And they just look perfect in a reef. Uh, the way they blend in, the way that their body kind of breaks up uh, with that pattern, I mean, they're awesome. And when you don't have corals to worry about, um, you can have fish like a porcupine puffer and a clown trigger. So that's kind of the benefit of having the fake coral. And we also have a yeah. sailfin tang. So we got some larger, you know, fish that are going to get pretty big. Um, it'll be definitely interesting to see how big they grow and how fast they grow, uh, given that they have a decent amount of space in this aquarium. Uh, there's a powder blue tang that just zipped by. So I think there's also a purple tang in here and a couple of angel fish, but they're, it's hard to get a video of them because they are hiding. And then of course, you know, uh, being that this is a family tank, you gotta have the, the Nemo in here, the clownfish. Um, these guys are just chilling right now. So, uh, I'm going to start getting prepared for a gravel vac, so let's go ahead and work on that next. How awesome is this? Look at this gravel vac. This thing is huge. How many feet is this thing? Four. Four feet? I think this is the biggest gravel vac I've ever, I ever used for sure, but I definitely have ever seen. So it's definitely coming in handy now. Mm-hmm. You ready to let it rip? This is my second time using this gravel vac. Yeah, I'm, I'm down for it. We're waiting on Ryan though, right? With the... No, you can send it. All right, here we go. Three, two, one, send it. God, that's so nice. It's really working well. It's tossing up everything, and that's that wasn't very deep. Let's go to deeper area. Here we go. And it pulls the sand up. 
but like no sand makes it to the top. Yeah, by the time you get to the way top, it's all kind of falling off. So usually underneath where the rocks are is where it's the dirtiest. Am I right? You no, are right. Really the gravel is actually pretty clean. Mm hmm. The sand is new. The sand is only a few months old. Oh, okay. Chris always rocking the stylish boxers. Ah, come on. <laughs> I know we're focusing on like where the brown is, but I feel like Underneath, like, you know what I mean, where it's deeper and it's a little bit more close to the rock will be better. So, this basket right here, we had used to check and see if there was any disease in the aquarium. We put a couple freshwater black mollies in there. We're taking that out today. It's a beast of a tank. Now let's talk about the plumbing. Let's see what we're looking at in this massive aquarium. Oh, Lord, I have a light now. All right, so here's the plumbing underneath. And now what's the issue, Tommy? Uh, so I don't like that this floor is metal. You don't like that the floor is metal? Okay. Even though we have a bunch of salt creek coming from that bulkhead. So, oh yeah, look at that. Yeah. Wow. Now I don't see any drips, any active drips. Um, but at some point we'll have to come here prepared to totally drain the overflow Yeah, and then work on that bulkhead. Okay. Right next time we come, cause look at all this rust. Yeah. That's a ton. Wow. Uh, and then these pipes are very casually supported with these pipe straps. Mm -hmm. um, not very sturdy. No, not very sturdy. It has wiggle. I'm not going to wiggle it much because they're plumbed straight into these bulkheads which are at least, uh, you know, stronger bulkheads than what you see in a lot of aquariums. But the, the potential for failure when yeah. you have a system like this is much higher than if these were properly supported from the floor uh, or with appropriate straps at, you know, regular intervals. So that's something that we'll have to work on too. The good news is the plumbing that we have to worry about is right here. Mm -hmm. Both of the closed loops, which is this plumbing and some plumbing that's down there, yeah. buried behind all this. Mm -hmm. uh, those with the closed loop and that's off right They're now. off, yeah. So that's a good thing not to worry about. And we probably won't be turning those back on at any time in the near future, right? No, no, I don't think so. Okay. Well, this tank is so big that they have the filtration outside. So let's go outside and check out the sump and uh, let's see what we're looking at. So we're trying to figure out how to get in here a little bit better. This whole panel comes off and then we're able to actually get in there and access the filtration. Yeah, how come there's no skimmer or anything like that or media reactors or anything? Or that's what you're thinking those might've been used for. I think those were used as media reactors. And then okay. apparently there used to be a skimmer and uh, now it's gone. Okay, so. gotcha. When it disappeared. It disappeared at some point. Gotcha. But we have one on order. Okay, uh, so we're gonna put up the skimmer right here. Yep, SRO 9000 external reef octopus. Nice. This is something else. Oh. So this too. That's a chiller there. So we gotta figure out what all this does. Yep. All these pipes coming through here, nothing's labeled, there's no... So we're gonna spend some time labeling all that today. Okay. Yep. And now that's the RO unit. Now how does that... You can see the DI is still spent. Yeah. Um, and then I think the uh, auto shutoff valve is faulty, malfunctioning, or it might even be improperly installed. So when we get in there, we'll take a look at that and figure out why. Because if you leave the water running, even if the RO stops pumping in, it's constantly producing wastewater. Gotcha. And that's yeah. a problem. Yeah. Now, so just the two tiny ones up top are the DIs. Yeah. And the other two are, what are those? I can't tell. Is that carbon? 
could put both carbon. It might be a sediment and a carbon. I haven't gotten in there yet. That's crazy for this big of a tank to go through as much probably top off water as it's going through to only have those two DI resins. Well, it doesn't go through a ton of top off water because the tank is sealed on top. Oh, okay. So, yeah, but it's got we'll go really, check that out. Yeah. All right, but do you think we should make an upgrade to that in the, in the future? Uh, potentially. We'll see how it okay. performs. Well, that's quite the setup. Wow. Definitely looks like there could be some improvements here, for sure. Now, for those wondering, yes, we are going to try to gym jam a refugium in here. So we'll add a light uh, to get that going. But that's the plan, and, some, and obviously some more uh, sponges and things like that. We've been doing a water change here for a bit, and it doesn't even look like it's even gone down even the slightest. That's, that's how much water is in here. That's insane. We've been running this thing for like 15 straight minutes. Now the water has a bit of a yellow tint to it, and um, our feeling is that there could have been some type of medication that was dosed to the aquarium, uh, potential fish disease in here that the previous service company might have dosed, and that's what's giving it the yellow tint. But we're not 100% on that, but that's just one of the theories we're working with. So the tricky part about filling a tank like this is you have one guy inside that's pumping water in, and then you have one guy over here that's sitting here on the phone with him, letting him know when to cut the water off, when the water level is good. All right, so it looks like we were right, and they were using these canisters as media reactors. You look inside, it's full of gunk, it's been sealed shut. This thing absolutely reeks. This might be a biomedical hazard. I don't know if we can throw this out of the normal dump. Chris, we, we might need we might need to call some people hazmats. That's why I had you film, because I'm not going anywhere near that. <laughs> I can't wait to look at the floss. Check out the floss. You wanna Go grab it? Floss. Yeah. Has it been changed since we not since uh yeah, I mean, this is our first oh, service. dead fish bones and stuff in there. Are there really? Yeah. Uh, a bunch of dead fish bones. Oh. See that? Oh, yeah. Oh, no. Poor buddy. Ugh. All right. Oh, interesting. Huh? Look at the flow rate. It's coming out of basically only one drain. Yeah, it's like it's coming out real good there, and the other two are... I don't know what they were doing. Yeah, are you getting haunted house vibes right now? I'm getting like... <laughs> Inside of here? Yeah. I'm getting like this. This is like the haunted house of tanks. I don't know. Like, I mean, it, it, I feel it like seems, I'm in it danger. Seems, it seems... Yeah, it seems lifeless. <laughs> it seems like there's a lot of death, a lot of skeletons. It just seems like the water is yellow. It just doesn't seem like a, a, like, a, like a... When I say haunted house, I mean it's like there's not a lot of life in this aquarium. Chris. It seems dead. Are we about to do an exorcism? I, we're about to perform an exorcism on this thing. <laughs> Let's just take a look how nasty this is. Like, oh my gosh. Uh, it smells so bad. And there's nothing but fish skeletons all in there. Which also leads me to believe that there was definitely fish disease in this aquarium because there's a ton of dead fish bones in there. And uh, when I, we were gravel vacuuming, there was a bunch of uh, fish skeletons also. So. They probably had a significant die off because this tank is really, really big to have only so many fish in it. Oh, nice boxers, Tommy. Oh, thank you. Look, he actually, he, he, he made it back there. Now the question is, how do you get out of there? <laughs> All right, I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna jump. Can you get that pencil, oh. uh, pencil support? <laughs> Some more fish coming out now that they feel comfortable. Uh, for a first visit, this was a lot to take in. Uh, we definitely have to come up with a game plan going forward. So we are done here. Oh, there goes the eel. Crossing. Zebra eel. So we are done here. Uh, we did a water change and the water is a bit cloudy from the water change, but um, a lot of work to do in this tank going forward. And there's the other eel. So there's two eels total in here. Look at this here. This is a little guide to all the fish that they have in here. That's kind of cool. Although some of these fish are no longer in here. How sick is this? There's a TV that is attached to this fish tank. It goes up and down right here. So this is what it looks like fully out, but it, the, that granite counter opens up 
and the TV just comes out of there. Like, that's insane. So this is one of the more invasive species down here in Florida that's not quite talked about enough. The Cuban anole. And uh, they look like iguanas, which is probably what people think they are that aren't familiar with them. But I just caught one right here on Tommy's truck. And they're pretty cool. Chris, why are you holding it like that? I don't want to get bit. Look at that mouth. Look at those teeth. From this little guy? Oh, he's a buddy. When I was young, I used to catch lizards all the time. Now that I'm older, yeah, I always hesitate. But these guys are awesome. Uh, side note, my cat loves them. Anytime he gets a hold of these things, it's, it's lunchtime. Forget the real invasive in this story is Chris's cat, not the uh, not the Cubanite and all that does way less damage than, than Chris's cat. All right, so we are leaving now. Um, what are your final thoughts with wrapping up that 2,000 gallon tank? Uh, well, first, before I get on the road, I wanna put my seatbelt on. And then um, it, it definitely needs a good amount of work, but the owner is uh, very excited to have that work done and get the tank where it needs to be so that he can put the animals that he wants in there. So I'm really hopeful that we can make this, uh, you know, 10 out of 10 display. I'm excited for the future of this tank and uh, excited to see where we can go from here. I'll definitely keep you guys updated on the tank's progression. Until then, have a good one. See you soon.